You may have heard of CCD sensors some time ago when people much younger and cooler than me discovered taking photos on so-called digicams. Most of these tiny cameras have a CCD sensor inside, but CCD sensors were used not only in digital compact cameras, but they were a predominant technology in all digital cameras produced up to roughly the first decade of 2000s. Since then, CCD sensors have been superseded by CMOS sensors, but they still have die-hard fans believing in the superiority of the images coming from this older tech. The popular notion is that CCD sensors produce a more filmic, organic looking images, while images coming from CMOS sensors are clinical and lack a character. Stay with me to see the comparison tests and find out what are really the differences between photos and videos captured on CCD and CMOS sensors. CCD and CMOS are two types of image sensors used in digital cameras. The beginning of the process is the same in both. A light particle hits a photosensitive cell producing an electric charge. The difference lies in how the sensor reads this data and converts it into a digital signal. Because of it, each one of them has the pros and cons. CCD sensors are prone to vertical smearing and blooming of bright light sources. On the plus side, they often have a so-called global shutter, so no distortion when filming or photographing fast-moving objects. And they may or may not render more filmic images. More on that later. CMOS sensors have, since their introduction, fixed many of their early issues. But up to this day, they can suffer from the infamous rolling shutter effect. So, the distortion when filming or photographing fast-moving subjects, the fixed pattern noise, and they may or may not produce clinical images that lack character. Let's have a look at the comparisons and see where the truth lies. Let's start with stills and we'll move on to video later. To test how the images coming from both sensors differ, I took a series of images in a controlled environment. I used mostly a CCD-based Nikon D80 and a CMOS Canon 400D, both released in 2006. There's no point in comparing a CCD camera released 14 years ago and a modern CMOS one, although I did it anyway. The most apparent difference for me is in the noise pattern. Heavily underexposed areas on the early CMOS-based cameras have this ugly fixed pattern noise. It is much more pleasing and organic looking on the CCD cameras. The CCD cameras also handled overexposure slightly better. I was able to bring the exposure down by two stops and while you can see the clipped highlights, I think they look a bit better on the CCD cameras. But if we look at a photo taken on a modern CMOS sensor, it handles both under and over exposure extremely well. In terms of color rendition, it's a similar case as in modern cameras, I think. Images from Canon are slightly warmer than, for example, from Nikon. Images from the CMOS-based Canon appear to be more saturated as well, both in RAW with default settings and JPEG. But it didn't take me long to edit them, so they look almost identical. It looks to me like it has nothing to do with a sensor that's inside a camera, but with the manufacturer's approach to rendering color. In terms of rolling shutter, I couldn't get any of that effect on any of the older cameras, probably because they have only mechanical shutter. But look at this image of a fan taken with an electronic shutter on a 2020 Sony A7S III. The rolling shutter effect is still there and is quite severe. Same thing goes for flashing lights. On CCD and CMOS sensors with mechanical shutter, the whole frame is exposed evenly. If the advantages of CCDs for photography are a bit debatable, they've had some obvious advantages for video, mainly global shutter. Global shutter means that when a camera captures a frame, the whole sensor is read at once, like on film cameras. 
<laughs> Most CMOS sensors suffer from the rolling shutter effect as the sensor is read line by line, resulting in the image distortion. It comes from the fact that on CMOS sensors, before the camera finishes the sensor readout, the objects in the frame have already changed their position. This effect can be visible when filming fast-moving objects, doing quick pans or filming flashing lights. The popular belief is that all CCD sensors have a global shutter. Apparently, it's not exactly true, but still most video-capable CCD sensors have it. Nowadays, some high-end cine cameras are equipped with global shutter CMOS sensors and the first full-frame global shutter CMOS sensors are making their way into widely available digital cameras, like in the Sony A93. Of course, aside from those easy-to-prove issues, there is still the mystery of CCD sensors' color rendition. Beside the older camcorders, there are a few cine cameras equipped with a CCD sensor, which are praised for the filmic image quality or organic looking grain. Like the unique digital Bolex, Econoscope A-Cam or the almost mythical Sony F35. There are a few areas of scientific and technical imaging where CCD sensors have, or rather have had up until recently, the advantage over the CMOS ones. CCDs were used, for example, for extreme low light or near infrared imaging. Nowadays, the advancement in CMOS technology allowed this type of sensors to achieve similar or even better results, but CCD technology is not dead yet. So, there are some differences between the CCD and CMOS sensors that we can prove and some that are much more subjective. I think it's mostly not about the colors, as these can be adjusted to taste, but more about the nostalgia and the experience of using outdated tech that's just not that perfect. Like the young people using old digicams, I'm pretty sure many of them don't care about the sensors that's inside the thrift shop found camera, but more about the raw image quality and that nostalgic vibe. In terms of color, I also think that due to the limited dynamic range of the older sensors, they really try to protect the highlights. Therefore, images coming from them appear darker and more cinematic. Another thing is that the lower resolution makes the images softer and again, less sterile and more film-like. Another theory as to why the photos coming from CCD sensors may look more filmic is that as it was still the early days of digital cameras, manufacturers were really trying to make the images look like film. For example, the early digital Leicas tried to mimic the look of Kodak Kodachrome. Film was still a superior medium at the time and also photographers were just used to a specific look. No matter what is the reason, I think there is something really inspiring in using all the technology and embracing its imperfections. And on MPB.com we sell not only the latest models, but also the slightly older ones, which are cheaper, still provide great image quality and often a unique user experience. My conclusion would be, if you should JPEG, you may find the output of many CCD cameras more pleasing, but you can get great straight out of camera images with modern CMOS cameras as well, especially the ones equipped with a robust JPEG adjustment engine like the ones from Fujifilm or Olympus. But if you should RAW and edit your photos, you can make them look filmic or however you want them and a CCD sensor won't really give you a rational advantage. But photography is not about scientific facts but it's about fun, so if a CCD camera inspires you, grab one and go capture those clips highlights. So, what are your thoughts on the great CCD versus CMOS debate? Are those CCD sensors magical or not? I'm rather skeptical, but if you're a strong believer, please prove me wrong in the comments. At MPB, we have a unique access to a wide range of photo and video gear, both the latest and the slightly older ones. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video to help us spread the message that all cameras can be great tools when in good hands. See you next time.